All right, in this section, we're going to look at some applications of linear equations. So when we're solving applications, remember these are typically word problems. So there are some strategies you can use to help you be better prepared when solving them. The first thing you want to do, um, although this maybe seems silly to say, but obviously make sure you read the problem and you want to read it as many times as you need to until you fully understand it. So you should be able to state in your own words the information that's given and particularly what the problem is looking for. So what are you trying to answer? What are you trying to solve? What is the goal of that problem? And it can help to write that goal out too. So if you find you're getting stuck, sometimes just to take a couple seconds and write some words down, um, you know, some key terms or, or the question that you're trying to find is really important there. Once you know your question, you're gonna choose a variable. You can use X or another letter to represent one of the unknowns in the problem. So one of the things that you're trying to find. Now, if you have more than one unknown, so maybe you're trying to find both the length and the width of an object, for instance, then you're going to take the other unknown and write it using that same variable X. So we're not going to create two variables here or three variables, such as X and Y for the length and width. We're going to choose one of those to be the variable, and then we're going to write any of the unknowns using that same X. Once we have our variables set up and defined, we're going to somehow find an equation. So look at our data, see what it gives us to write an equation that models the problem. We're going to obviously solve the equation and answer the problem's question. So make sure you go back and answer this, typically in a sentence or at least with units. And then make sure you check your solution in the original wording of the problem. Um, now there's no perfect check when we're doing applications here, right? Because we're kind of making our own equations but you can check with using the original wording to make sure your answer seems reasonable. Does it make sense? Is it logical? Um, for instance, if we're trying to find the length and the width of an object and our answer is negative 10, then we know that doesn't make sense, right? So you wanna make sure that your answer makes sense for the problem. Now, some questions have key phrases that they look at, others may just have the situation that you have to recognize, but there are some key phrases that we can look at. And this is from your text, so if it's a little clear in the text if you want some bigger writing. Um, but there are some keywords to watch out for that do mean addition. One of those keywords is some. Another key word is or phrase is more than or even plus, right? So when we use the words more than or plus, we're usually referring to addition, as well as if we're increasing a number or we're adding to a number. Those typically all represent addition. Now for subtraction words you may see are minus, decrease, obviously subtract, difference is a key word here, less, minus, or fewer. Now with subtraction, the order is actually really important. With addition and multiplication, we know that these are commutative, meaning that the order doesn't matter. Um, for instance, two plus three and three plus two are the same answer, uh, but that's not true with subtraction or division. Our order is important here. So you do really need to be careful about how the question reads. So for subtraction, a number minus four, if we're using X to represent that number, would be X minus four. A number decreased by five, X minus five. Now here, a number subtracted from eight. When we have that word from, it tends to reverse the order of things. It tells us our starting point. So if we're going from eight, eight is the starting point here. So it's going to be eight minus X instead. Okay. The difference between a number and six, X minus six, the difference between six and a number, six minus X. Seven less than a number. So that word than also tends to reverse the order. So our, we're starting with the number, which is X and we're going seven smaller. So X minus seven. 7 minus a number, so 7 minus x, or 9 fewer, again, than a number. So when you see those keywords from and than, you definitely want to watch out. They typically reverse the order. Um, with addition, it doesn't matter so much. Um, you do see it here, 5 more than a number, so x plus 5 instead of 5 plus x. But for subtraction, it really makes a difference, or else your signs will be off. Okay. Keywords for multiplication, times. Product, 
The word of, so that word of typically means to multiply. We tend to use it a lot with fractions, decimals, percents. 75% of a number. And again, when we're talking about percents, we typically change to the fraction of the decimal form. Obviously the word multiply. In other number words like twice. So when we see twice, that means times two. If you see something like triple, that means times three, or double also means times two. So there are other keywords like that that are specific multiplication terms. With division, again, order does matter here. So they typically give the fraction or the quotient in order. So a number divided by three, x over three. The quotient of seven in a number, so seven is given first, it goes on top. The quotient of a number in seven, again, x goes on top here because it's given first. Now reciprocal is also used for division. It basically means a flipping motion. So the reciprocal of a number means to take that number and put it in the denominator. Now the last set is when you have more than one operation. So you do wanna be careful here, particularly with parentheses you can come in to kind of show um, what operation should be done first. So let's look at these examples. We have the sum of twice a number. So twice a number refers to two times X and seven. Sum means we're adding. So we're adding two X and seven. Now the second one is similar, but it's different. Notice how it says here, not twice a number, but it says twice the sum. So we're not multiplying a number by two, we're multiplying the whole sum by two, which is why you have that two with the parentheses here. And then the sum is the number in seven. Same idea with the next one, three times the sum. So you're taking that three and you're multiplying it by the entire sum of one and twice a number, two X. Nine subtracted from, so it's gonna reverse the order. So you see that minus nine at the end, eight times a number, eight X. 25% of, again, that word of means multiply for Percent, we don't usually leave them in percent form, we put them in decimal form. So to do that, you just divide by 100. So we use 0.25 here. And it's of the sum. So again, we're multiplying by the whole sum of three times a number, which is three X and 14. Seven times a number is seven X, increased by 24 plus 24. Here, seven times the sum, so seven parentheses x plus 24. So you just want to be careful. Are you multiplying by a number in which it's times x? Or are you multiplying by a sum or a difference that works as well? So I could say um, 7 times the difference between a number um, and 5, for instance. So 7 times the difference means subtraction between a number and five. So be careful to see what are you multiplying by? You're multiplying by just a number or are you multiplying by a sum or difference, in which case we need parentheses there. All right, let's look at our first example. So we have a bar graph here um, and it shows the average yearly earnings in the United States by highest educational attainment. So here we have some high school. So this is some high school. This here is full high school graduation. This is some college. This is an associate's degree. Um, this is your bachelor's degree. And this is your master's degree. Now your associates and bachelors could be a bachelor's of the arts or a bachelor's of science. Same thing for your associates and your master's. So that's why I'm just using those two different notations here. And then they're also by male and female. So the female is the dark gray and the male is would be the light gray. So we see that the average yearly salary of a man with a bachelor's degree exceeds that of a man with an associate's degree 
by 25,000. The average yearly salary of a man with a master's degree exceeds that of a man with an associate's degree by 45,000. Combined, three men each with these degrees earn $214,000 and we're going to find the average yearly salary of men with each of these levels of education. So notice that I do have my graphs here, but it's really hard to see the exact value, right? So I can kind of see that, you know, this bar here is a little bit above 30. This bar here is almost at the 50, but I don't know the exact values. So we do need to form some sort of linear equation here to solve and get the exact values because I can't see them on the bar graph. It's, you know, I can't find the exact values here. They don't give them to us. So let's see again what we know. We know that we have a man with a bachelor's degree exceeds, or the salary exceeds that of a man with an associate's degree by 25,000. The average yearly salary for a man with a master's exceeds that of a man with associates by 45,000. And combined, three men with each of these degrees earn 214,000. So before I get started here, I'm just gonna make some notes. So I have three men. So I have man one, man two, and I have man three. And what I'm told is that these three men, each with these degrees, meaning that they each have one of these degrees. So I see a bachelor's, I see a master's, and I see an associate's. It doesn't matter who I call what, I'm gonna just go in order. So man one is gonna have the associate's degree, man two is gonna have the bachelor's degree, and man three is gonna have the master's degree. Okay, so I have three men, each with a different degree. Now, what I know is that the total that the three of them make is $214,000, okay? And here's my question or my goal. I want to find the average salary for each of the men. So my goal is to find the average salary for each man. Now, you don't have to write this out. I find it helpful though. It just helps me to focus my attention a little bit more. So what I'm trying to actually figure out here is the salary for man one who has the associate's degree. I'm trying to find out the salary for man two who has the bachelor's degree. And I'm trying to figure out, again, the average salary for man three who has the master's degree. Okay. So that's really what I have to answer, three different things that I'm trying to figure out. So I can't use three different variables, X, Y, and Z. I need to just pick one variable because we don't know how to solve things with more than one variable yet, so we can't do it. So we need to pick one of these to be the variable. Now, you can super pick whatever you want, but usually, not always, but usually most problems kind of direct you towards something. And I want you to read through again here. And notice that it says the man with the bachelor's degree exceeds that of a man with the associate's degree by 25,000. And then it says the man with a master's degree exceeds that of a man with an associate's degree by 45,000. So everything is kind of being compared to the associate's degree. When that's the case, that is the easiest thing to make your variable. So notice that more than one thing is being compared to the associate's degree. So I'm gonna let my associate's degree salary be the X. Now I know the bachelor's degree exceeds that of the associate's degree by 25,000. If you exceed something, it means you have more than that. So exceeds is another word that means addition here. So it's $25,000 more than the associates, right? So it's whatever the associates is plus 25,000. I don't know the associates, I'm calling it X. So this is X plus 25. And then the master's degree again exceeds, so we're looking at something greater than a plus sign, a man with the associates by 45,000. So the master's is the associate's degree plus 45,000. I don't know what the associates is yet, so I'm going to do X plus 45. 
So this is steps one and two here. I've defined my variable, I've read through, I've taken notes, I figured out what I've had to find, and everything is in terms of x. Now I need to go ahead and write that equation. So the only other piece of information I know is my total is 214,000. And your total means to add everything up. It's another word that really means addition. So I'm going to add up my three degrees, and it's going to equal my 214,000. So the associate's degree plus the bachelor's degree plus the master's degree gives me 214,000. Well, the associate's degree we're calling X. The bachelor's degree we're calling X plus 25 and the master's degree we're calling X plus 45. So these three things should add up to 214. So I have three X and then combining my, so one, two, three X's, and then combining the 25 and the 45, I have, let's see, 70. Now I can go ahead and solve. So when I subtract 70 from both sides, I get 124, and then, sorry, 144, uh, excuse me, 11 minus seven is four, and then when I divide by three, I get X equals 48. Now we haven't answered the question yet. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my answers back in up here. So think of what we have here. The X value was 48. And we said that X was for the associate's degree. So a man who earns an associate's degree is 45,000. Now for the batch, sorry, not 45, my goodness, sorry, 48,000. Sorry, this is 48 down here. Now for the bachelor's degree, it was whatever the associate's is plus 25. So I'm gonna take the associate's degree. I'm gonna add that 25 to it and I get 73. So my answer here is 73,000. And then for the masters, it was the associates plus 45. So again, I'm gonna take that 48 from the associates. I'm gonna add 45 here and I'm looking at 93. So my answer here is 93,000. So that's the answer to the question. The salary for an associate's degree is 48, for a bachelor's degree is 73,000, and for a master's degree is 93,000. Again, these are on average, but we can also verify this with our table. So if you go up here and look, you do see that this value here is almost 50, so 48 makes sense. This value here is a little above the 70, so 73 does make sense. And this value here is above the 90, so 93 does make sense. So it looks like our answer is good.